Hello everybody, and this is another video from Vintage Video AU. Today on the bench I have this Kenwood XD351 Mini Hi-Fi Component System, and the main problem with this one so far is that the cords cut off as usual. So I think the first thing I do is unscrew everything and replace that cord. Who listens to the radio anyway? Boy, that was a lot of screws. So anyway, now I can pop the top off and see what I'm dealing with. This particular unit was made in Malaysia, as most units of the late 90s and early 2000s were made. Um, this one has a date code on it, on the transformer. It says 98. 22. So that's the 22nd week of 1998, which would make sense because this unit was released in 1999. Okay, well, there's not an awful lot in here, but I do see I'm going to have to take out this circuit board attached to the transformer because that is hard soft. It's hard soldered onto there. So I think what I'll do is I'll take off the back. And I've, here's the power cord there. I can take that out here and just take the wires off using some pliers. Okay, we'll just take off these cable ties so we can get access to the terminals. And just using up, just using this preheated soldering iron and some desoldering braid, I should be able to just get it off here. We've got a new power cord. and some wire strippers. So, I'll just strip the cable on this. Okay, I'm going to put this clamp back on now. Perfect. Alright, we'll put it back on now. Okay, moment of truth, I'm plugging it in. <laughs> There's a standby light there, that's a good sign. Turn it on. Sounds like the CD changer belt's busted.
on, mm, I don't know, might not be. Oh, it might be just do it slack. Okay. Um, where's the backlight on this display? No, nope, that doesn't do anything. Do we have a blown backlight? Yeah, it looks like that's kind of broken. Try playing a CD in it. Replacing the motor belt. Yeah, that's a pretty loose belt. I might replace that one. Okay, I've got my bag full of belts. And we'll just get one. Yeah, that looks to be the right size. Like that one. And just take off the old belt. You can see the difference in size. Might get a slightly bit bigger one. Like that one, this one should do. And we'll also replace this one. Should be good. All right, we'll slide it back in now. Let's turn it back on and see if that resolves the problem. Well, it closes by itself and now it moves. it's checking for the CDs. Power on. Put a CD in it. Will it work? I don't think it did. No. It could just be a stuck laser. I'll have a look. We'll eject it. Okay. Unplug this. I'll give the laser head a bit of a clean. Because it looks, looks a bit dirty under there. Because it, it looks a bit frosted, that's what I'm saying. So it could be, just be dusty, and it looks like it is, because I'm actually getting a lot of dust off it. It's 
it's got a Sanyo CD mechanism and a Sanyo display and it's an Ashen me cassette mechanism as you can see by these wonderful piano key functions. So on this is a little bit of dust that came off the CD laser. So let's see if it works now. Because it doesn't usually fail. Oh. And it is work it's working. It's actually reading it. Although it does keep skipping. hitting the top, I think. So now that it plays the CD, no problems. Um, I think it might be time to move on to something else. So I'm guessing the radio works. I'm guessing the cassette deck works. Let's test it. I'll see if I can shine a light in here, see what Let's see what, um, if you to see what I'm seeing. Um, let's press play. I hear the motor going, but no belt. Uh, I'll try this one. This one seems to work. Okay, so deck B works, but not deck A. Okay, I've got it as far apart as I can possibly take it. I think the only problem is this belt here has fallen off. So I'm going to replace this with another new belt, hopefully of the same size. This is the Tenashian mechanism in all of its cheap, crappy glory. As you can see, just a basic piano key control panel. Nothing fancy about it whatsoever. At least this one has an electro electromagnetic erase head instead of a uh, just a regular one. Um, so what I'm trying to do now is get the belt in a little easier. So all I'm going to do is thread it through this. I think you're supposed to do it through the front.
we go. And that is fixed. Here's the screen. I've decided to take it out because the uh, bulbs in it appear to be blown, which is no good. I think if I pry these tabs off, like so, I should be able to replace the bulbs that way. which I can do. Okay, just being careful of this reflector. So you can see the bulbs now. There's three of them painted blue. I don't have blue bulbs, but I do have regular white ones. Um, clear ones, incandescent. Going in three, two, one. Hey, look at that. We have a clock and it's illuminated. That is a really good sign. So replacing those bulbs did help. And now, now take a look at the display. Now it appears a bit washed out on this one, but in my point of view it's fine so yeah that does work and the CD player is working okay let's try hooking up some speakers to it and see what that does Right music. Okay, that's enough of that country um, input tape, aux, tuna. Tuna, um, where's band? Band. Hey, let's test out the tape. Yeah. Now 
that's lo-fi if ever I heard it. I have the front panel off and what I'm going to do, I'm going to open this um, little rotary encoder up and I'll try and um, fix it because at the moment the volume is just all over the place. And this happens on Kenwoods and Marantz's and basically any stereo or, you know, amplifier. You know, it's actually a pretty common problem. Okay, here it is. So I'm going to give it a good clean down with some methylated spirits. So just going around the contacts because they look pretty filthy, a bit rusty maybe. And then afterwards we'll put some fresh grease on. These contacts look a bit corroded, especially this outer ring. It must measure the difference between the um, outer ring and um, the inner ring with all those different um, contacts on them. I'll just spray a bit of contact cleaner on there, see if it dissolves some of this crud. So this isn't really a difficult repair, it's just time consuming because you have to take the whole thing apart. But once you do this, you shouldn't have to worry about it for another 10, 20 years. And they go bad all the time, you'd be surprised how many people chuck stuff out just because of this little switch. Okay. Uh, that looks pretty good. Um, so I'll put it back in the unit now with some grease. Actually, I better clean these leaves on here too. Where are they? There. Those um, probably need to be done too. To just give everything a good clean down. Put this back on with a dab of lithium grease. So just spray it in here and on the encoder itself. Just like that, it doesn't have to be doesn't have to be much. And we'll have to line up with whichever way it came out. Which way 
one was it? This way. Or the other way. I don't think it matters. Do it that way. And then you just get your pliers and you tighten up these uh, contacts again. Get the big pliers. couple of times. Okay, that should be good. Now we can reinstall it. All right, everybody, I've got it reinstalled. Got it um, all redone. And now look what happens when I turn the volume knob. Ready? Oh yeah, look at that. That That's so smooth compared to last time. It is a bit looser, but um, I guess that's a good thing because you don't want it too stiff, otherwise you can't really turn it. But you know, I'd call that a success. So I'm going to I'm going to um, put it together fully, and I'll have another test of it. So the stereo is on now. I'm just going to try playing a tape first. I'll give the heads another clean because they're still pretty filthy. Get a bit of contact cleaner in there. the side Okay, I'm gonna put the cassettes back in. Let's try a cassette. Mm. Still a bit muffled. Let's try another one. Working good.
I love to say we've got a fully working stereo. So thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.